From chapter one, Wayne Isaacs, I'm not mad, I'm psychic. I had a few friends at school, I can't blame them. I was an angry, spotty, whiff of a wet-the-bed boy with a seriously bad attitude and quite likely to bash at the least provocation. By the age of thirteen, I was the acne king of Harrow. I looked terrible, was ashamed of my appearance, and I knew what an unattractive little lad I was. The mortification of just being the young Wayne Isaacs was depressing. I was one horrible grot, and I still carried with me the stench of dried urine. I hated myself, disliked school, the teachers were a bunch of unsympathetic, misanthropic, snotty bastards, or so I thought then. I was deteriorating fast, and causing my poor mum and dad no end of heartaches, but I did not know what was happening to me, and all this mysterious nighttime interaction with the supernatural was taking place alongside me becoming aware of the opposite sex. I had no chance. Any girl get near me would likely faint from the kind of body odour that would stop a runaway horse at fifty paces. My only connection with sex was looking at page three pictures in a downmarket national newspaper, and all that did was make me even more frustrated. Now I had a new name at school, Wayne King. I think it was the massive collection of spots I had that gave me away. I mean, I never told anyone. It was supposed to be my secret, but they knew. My teeth were also a big problem. The two front ones had grown apart, leaving a clearly discernible gap between them, so the cruel kids poked even more fun at me with another joke name. This time I was called Beaver. More anguish, and the shame of being Wayne King the Beaver is still with me. The teeth were fixed though, as I had a metal brace fitted, and it pulled them back together. For a time, I looked like that character from the James Bond film, Jaws. Well, my mouth did. Aged 13 years, Wayne Isaacs was a right mess, and my parents were worried. So was I. It was at this time that I began to receive information about others that was not conveyed to me through any of my five senses. I just seemed to know. I recall clearly being in the school playground and running up to a boy in my class saying, Grandfather John sends his love. Those words just came to me and I had to say them to the boy who instantly started to weep. I did not know that his beloved grandfather, whose name was John, had died the week before. The message just appeared in my mind. On another occasion I was sitting in the English class, looking at the teacher when I saw a car crash and shouted out, Look out, sir, the roadworks are there. After the lesson ended, the teacher called me over and asked me to tell him who had been talking about his accident. I did not know. No one had said anything to me. I just knew. I tried to explain that to him, but he said I was a naughty little liar and he would find out who had told me, as yes, he had crashed his car the day before hitting a big hole in some unmarked roadworks near his home. This kind of thing was happening to me all the time around my 13th birthday and onwards. It was absolutely beyond my control. I had the information bounce from nowhere into my mind and had to speak it despite not understanding where it came from or what it might really mean. That is an extract from chapter one of Wayne Isaac's book, I'm Not Mad, I'm Psychic. From chapter one, Wayne Isaac's I'm Not Mad, I'm Psychic. I had a few friends at school, I can't blame them. I was an angry, spotty, whiff of a wet-the-bed boy with a seriously bad attitude and quite likely to bash at the least provocation. By the age of thirteen, I was the acne king of Harrow. I looked terrible, was ashamed of my appearance, and I knew what an unattractive little lad I was.